All right, um, hello everyone. So we are going to continue with our work and go on through the grammar section. But we are going to go on with the present simple and continues. Uh, in the session, we are going to go through the different forms and then again, the usage of the tense. And we'll finish up by a small recapitulation. Before we move to the next section, which is going to be about uh, word order and sentence structure. First off, we start with the uh, present simple tense. Of course, this uh, time as well, we are going to go through the three different forms uh, within this tense. We have the positive, or what we call the affirmative form, we have the negative form, and we have the question form, or what we call um, uh, the, interrogative, the interrogative form. Then again, we start off by the first form, which is the positive. Here we have subject plus, plus verb. All right, so it's a, the subjects, they can be I, you, he, she, it, we, or, or they. And then again, the verb can be any verb. However, um, the verbs here, they take um, a couple of forms, which we are going to see. So we start off first with the subjects I and you, and we start off with we and they. All right, when we use I, you, we, they, the verb here doesn't change. There is no change in terms of the uh, format of the verb, there is no change uh, or no additions at the end of, of the verb. It keeps its base form. Then again, with he, she, it, with the third person, we have a small change at the end, usually, all right, with the regular verbs, we add s, es, or is. These are things that we are going to see shortly um, afterwards, and then we will see as well a couple of irregular verbs um, in the case of the present simple. Uh, but here, just to keep it simple, so with I, you, we, they, we use the, fer the verb as in the base form. So we say, for example, I, you, we, they work. And then again, with the third person, we say uh, he works. So we just add an S in the end. Uh, the second form is the negative form. The negative form, again, let's go uh, in the same order. So we start off with I, you, we, they, and then we go through the third person. All right, so in the case of the I, you, we, they, uh, the form is pretty simple. So we have do, the auxiliary to do, all right? We put it in the present. So with I, you, we say do. With he, she, it, we say does. And then we, you, they, we say do again. Uh, then again, the next thing that we have is not, the negation. Plus, of course, the verb in the infinitive. All right. In every in every step here, the verb remains the same. It does not change. The only verb that we conjugate is the auxiliary to do. So we say, for example, I do not work, or in the short form, I don't work. However, with the uh, third person, he, she, and it, we say he does not work. So here again, the only change is to do, right? The verb to do becomes does. The verb to do again is one of the uh, irregular verbs in the present simple, right? It kind of changed the form a little bit. So with I, you, we, they, we say do, and then with he, she, it, we say uh, does. And then we move on to the third and last form, which is the question form or the interrogative form. In this form, we kind of do a little uh, inversion of the, of the auxiliary and the subject. So we start off with do plus subject plus the verb. All right. Again, do, we use it with I, you, we, and they. And then again, does is used with the third person. So we say, does he? work do we work all right additionally here again the same as we have in the negative uh, the negative form in the question form the second verb does not change it remains in the base form or what we call uh, the uh, infinitive all right so we say do i work does he work or do we work etc again i would like you to just Pay attention here to some of the mistakes uh, that are made. So never should we say he doesn't works. 
However, we do say he doesn't work. All right. So you never conjugate the second verb. The first verb takes the present simple, which is does, and the second verb takes the infinitive form, the base form. Uh, the same thing for the question form again. Does she works? Nope, we don't say that. So we say, does she work? The first verb is in the uh, present simple. The second verb is in the base form. All right, we have a few examples here again. So we have in the affirmative, I live, all right? In the negative, I do not live or I don't live. So we have a subject plus do plus not plus verb in the infinitive. And then the interrogative form or the uh, question form, we say, do I live, all right? So we have the verb, the present plus subject plus the verb in the infinitive, or as we say in the base form. Again, with he, she, it, we have he lives, all right? So the verb uh, includes s in the end, which is the only change that happens. And it's the only uh, thing that we change in this case with the uh, present simple. So with the third person, we use the s in the end. And then we have the negative form, he, she, it, doesn't live. So we use subject plus does plus not plus the verb in the infinitive. And then again, with the interrogative or the question form, we have, does he live, uh, does she live, does it love or live, sorry for the table there. So we say subject, right? Uh, we use, um, sorry, we use the verb or the auxiliary to do with the present. So we say does plus the third person plus the subject he plus the verb in the infinitive. Uh, then again, let's move on to talk about the usage. When do we use the present simple? All right, um, I would love to keep it really, really simple in this case. Um, I would like you to focus on this part, habit. All right, so the present simple is one of uh, the most uh, used tenses uh, and most important for us uh, when it comes to uh, learning of basic English, because it's a tense that we use everywhere. We can use it in writing, we can use it in, in, in uh, grammar. It's just really basic and it's just everywhere. So what we say here, we use it for habits. The reason why is because the present simple is used for actions which are repeated, things that we repeat over and over. For example, here we have, she plays tennis every Tuesday, all right? This is a repeated action that happens every Tuesday. For example, you could say, uh, he plays football um, every Sunday, or they go to the gym uh, throughout the week, all right? Here, these are actions that happen on a regular basis. So we use the present simple. Then again, uh, we use it with things which are Fixed, things that do not change, things that are always true. For example, scientific truths, uh, uh, things that we agree on and do not change, uh, things like that. Then again, we have a few things concerning permanent situations. Right? For example, um, I live in London, or you say I live in Mujda, I live in Morocco. These are situations that are permanent on one side, or they do not change uh, throughout a long period. So in that case, we use the present simple again, all right? Then again, we have short actions now. Well, this is kind of uh, a case that I would like you not to focus on a lot, but just to keep it simple, um, these short actions, for example, we have he takes the ball and scores a goal. So this is a short action um, which after which another short action comes, and it's quite quick. It's really fast. So here in this case, uh, we use the present simple. So we cannot say, for example, he is taking the ball and scoring a goal, because here it's gonna look as if it's a long action, while it's not, it's just a short, fast action. You take the ball and you score a goal. Then we use the present simple in this case. All right, so um, just to recap, so we use the present uh, simple with habits, things that are always true and things which are permanent and do not change. Then again, I need you to remember something in terms of using S, ES, and IES 
uh, with the third person. If you remember, we said that we're going to talk about this later, and then here we are. So we start off first with ES, right? So we have a few conditions on to when we should use ES. So of course here we use ES in the end when we have these uh, conditions, when we have CH in the end, double S, SH, X, or double Z. For example, watch turns into watches, miss, misses, wash, washes, mix, mixes, and buzz, buzzes. All right, this is case number one. Um, in case number two, we have IS. Here, in this case, we use uh, the IS when we have a consonant. For example, we say hurry, we have a consonant plus a, a vowel. The consonant is R and the vowel is Y. So the Y becomes I and we say hurries. Again, for example, study becomes studies, reply, replies, etc. Then we move on to the third and last uh, case, which is when we have two vowels. In this case, when we have two vowels, we just add an S in the end, all right? So we say pay, pays, uh, enjoy, enjoys, play, plays, um, etc., etc. So um, uh, these are the three cases that you should remember in terms of using um, the uh, third person with uh, the verbs, right? So we use ES, IS, or S in the end.